Betty read this is translation of these letters has sold uh, over than 2 lakh copies since its publication in 1974 it is by far the most widely read book on abelard and alios in the english speaking world the pro viso english speaking is important the english was peripheral to abelard's own milieu he deliberately identified himself with the france and in particular with paris which represented for him the capital of france and the center of culture as writers he uh, he and alios have been famous in france at least since the publication of jean de meun's version of roman de la rose in early 1280s which praised alios and quoted from her first letter french enthusiasm for them remained very much alive and it is perhaps under going a a uh, revival in 1996 professor jack worger published a new authoritative account for the general reader jean jolivier did the same for abelard's theology a novel by antony entitled echoing the final words of the elios's first letter farewell my only love was published in 2000 as an opera Ahmed essay suggests that theater musical in 2001 this persian theater was an appropriate location to remember abelard and alios as the chateau and was fortified great which gave him access to the heart of paris where their own drama has been portrayed 9 centuries earlier students came to abelard from all over latin Christendom and he described how he considered himself the greatest philosopher in the world he knew nothing about china or india and a very little about islam or byzantium his world was in famous confined to catholic or romanesque europe which regarded itself as the successor of the old roman empire through Uh, this cultural inheritance from the middle ages european liberals of the 18th and 19th century identified with abelard and alios as follows three spirits confronting prosecutions and prejudices they were regarded as martyrs for the love and heroes in the struggle against the catholic church as models of the eight enlightened society abelard was seen as the champion of the reason opposing superstition this point is very very significant where we have to find out that he is fighting against superstition and he is championing the cause of a uh, scientific temperament so abelard was seen as a champion of the reason so reason versus superstition reason is overpowering superstition while alois was understood as challenge to the doctrine of celibacy upon which the power of catholic clergy depended she was also perceived as a proto feminist who opposed patriarchy by contradicting abelard and ridiculing the pretensions of monk so that is what there are number of things which we find where alois is represented as a she is opposing patriarchy and even she is a she is a prototype of feminist i mean she is talking about her own uh, as task and she is representing herself in her own self throughout much of the western europe abelard and alios remained household name among educated people particularly liberals well into the first half of the 12th century as version of the letters has been translated into principal european languages their dilemma were comprehensible and interesting to anyone with christian education whether catholic or protestant catholic could be shocked or inspired by the irreverence of abelard and alios towards ecclesiastical authority while protestant deplored the cruelty which with authority while uh, with which the roman church had treated them celibacy was one of the most significant aspect of catholic roman religion and when abelard he could not follow the uh he could not practice as a monk as a celibate he was castrated so this is the inhuman treatment done by catholicism which is why most of the critics uh, oppose this and criticizes catholics could be shocked or inspired by irreverence of abelard and alios towards ecclesiastical authority while protestants explored deplored the cruelty with which roman church 
had treated them, the prestige of Abelard and Alios as upstanding liberals made its way to the United States of America, the archetypal land of the freedom and opportunity for Europe in the 19th century, when the new state of Elinios recruited immigrants to populate Chicago. It advertised the city by declaring that, that her men are all like Abelard and her women like Alloy. Her, so when the new state of Illinois 1818 recruited immigrants to populate Chicago, it advertised the city by declaring that her men are all like Abelard and her women like Alloy. This form of Aloysia's name conveniently rhymed with Illinois. In return, rich American made the pilgrim to Paris to put flowers to the new Gothic tomb of Abelard and Alios in, in Pierre Lecce's cemetery. Symmetry, according to Mark Twain, writing under his real name of Samuel Clement, Clements in his travel book *Innocence Abroad*, and their tombs were more revered than more widely known than any other Christian dome, save that for Saviour himself. By contrast with all this, the popular reputation of Abelard and Alios dwindled in latter half of the 20th century. Especially in the English-speaking world, almost in a version ratio to the volume of scholarship concerning them and number of students engaged with the humanities, France is obvious exception to this rule because French national field still identifies with Abelard and Alios as famous French people. It is the success of Betty Redis's translation of the letters in the face of growing ap apathy and ignorance which makes her achievement so significant. Without her work, knowledge of the Abelard and Alios in English-speaking world might be dwindled to minuscule proportion. The letters would, of course, have continued to be known to experts in 12th century scholasticism and modernism, but they would no longer have been access to the wider public. The story of Abelard and Alios had been sustained in 1930s and 40s through the success of Helen Weddell's novel, Peter Abelard. This is a very attractive book to any expert on Abelard and Alios because it is steep in the original sources. However, in quotations from the Latin and theological rigors, no longer appeal to the young, the Chato and Winders in 1971 rescued Eddie MacLeod biography of Alios, which had sold so well and it was first published in 1938. It failed to make uh, into paperback. Similarly, uh, Regan uh, Parnout's Alios and Abelard, which sold widely in France, was limited to hand, a hard book when published in English translation by Collins in 1973. Explanations can only be speculative for the current decline in knowledge of Abelard and Alios among the English-speaking educated public. The decline in the de de didactic religion education is probably one cause catholic christians are no longer taught the theology of celibacy and some protestants have turned to multiculturalism instead of attracting attacking the pope furthermore the agonized sexual morality of abelard and aloe has become difficult for a new generation to understand as contraception is routine and abortion is argued to be women's right Abelard and Alios are in danger of no longer being seen as liberal icons or martyrs for law, but the ludicrous figure who could not get the grip on their lives. So far from being courageous of the principle, they look like a solipsist who dramatize their own grotesque predicament. After centuries of fame, time is at least threatening to effect the a memory of Abelard and Alios, the honored dead who are commemorated at at a new cemetery now include commanders of 1870, the soldiers of two world wars, Oscar Wilde and Jim Morrison. So it is understandable that visitors only occasionally now lay flowers on the tomb of Abelard and Alios at the entrance. Betty Redis opens her introduction with the generalization of most popular have heard of Abelard and Alios as a pair of lovers as famous in Dante and Bat Patrice, Patrice or Roman de la Rose. This revealed the generation to which Redis belonged as many as educated people now will not have heard of uh, Dante and Patrice uh, though they still know Roman, Romeo and Juliet. In 1935, Cole Porter had indeed coupled Abelard and Alios with Romeo and Juliet as free spirit as his popular song, Just One of Those Things.
Similarly with Dante and Beatrice, the pre-Raphaelite had idealized them as icon of the pure love. Reproduction of the romanticized portraits of the couple were still common in the first half of 20th century. For the generations of students in 1960, however, who have been educated neither in the Bible nor the Latin classic, the letter of Abelard and Alios Kant has immediate appeal. Today, students know of the Middle Ages and the time of Robin Hood, uh, King Arthur and Henry Potter, uh, and Harry Potter's Hogwarts Castle. Despite the dramatic content and focus on sex and violence, the letter of Abelard and Alios with their form, structure and classical term of reference do not readily fit into the fairy story view of the past. Nevertheless, the continued success of Radice's translation of the letter over the past 25 years and more showed that she did succeed in producing a modern text with appeal to readers. At the end of the introduction, she explained why she rejected the literal but archaic Arcane style of her producer C.K. C.K. Scott Moncrief. He was the translator of the Proust in extraordinarily good translation, but he chose for Abelard and Alios an archaic style which is almost impossible to read, though it renders to Latin very accurately. The objection to Scott's Moncrief translation of 1925 is that given the impression of Abelard and Alios old fashioned pedants, a member of some peculiar sect. A continuation modern elements which Reddy, Redis introduced into her translation is the distinction between personal letters and letters of direction. None of the manuscripts suggest any such direction, nor is there any break in the correspondence between letter 5 and 6. Redis derived these terms from J.T. Muckle's edition of the personal letters 1953 and uh, Anid MacLeod biography of Alios, which distinguishes love letters from letters of direction. There is indeed a crucial turning point in the correspondence at the beginning of the letter 6, which Alios sees being concerned with herself and asks Abelard on behalf of all her uh, nuns to counsel and direct them, which he duly does in letters 7 and 8. Redis' distinction between personal and letter of direction remains a useful one, however, as long as it is understood to be an additional explanation and not the work of Abelard and Alios. Hence, forward, in her extant correspondence at least, Alios always wrote to Abelard as the founder of her convent and convent and not as her special lovers. She may also have written more personal letters to him, but these have not been preserved. For example, she would have wanted to reply to his heart-rendering confession of faith, page number 211-12, to 12, which was addressed to her and published by his student, Baron Gur of Poetiers at the time of his condemnation. But she may have been just too unwise to record any reply to him, as that might embroil both her and her nuns in accusation of hearsay. Instead, she relied on the power of Peter the Venerable, a boat of Cluny. Though he did not help her as much as uh, he might have, she had to remain him to remind him to send her a written absolution to the hang on Abelard's tomb, and he was not enthusiastic about helping Astrolabe, the son of Abelard and Alios. The greatest threat to the reputation of Abelard and Alios over the past 30 years has come from allegations of forgery. But he read this underestimate these in her introduction in 1974, uh, though she had obtained a copy of wide-ranging allegations made by uh, John F. Benton at the International Conference at Cluny, 1971. She discussed Benton's argument only in a footnote because she thought from ill-founded, as indeed they were on, his own uh, later admission. But she had no way of for uh, foreseeing the popularity of the for forgery theory in America. It has monumented of its own, particularly among the academics and their students from whom question of disputed th authorship and literary theory were the staple subject of the seminars. For further, Benton wo won the support of the leading experts uh, Gill's constable at Harvard University, who in his survey of medieval letters and uh, letters uh, collection 1976, agreed that the most celebrated exchange of the love letters in medieval ages as Abelard and Alios may not be authentic. Uh, Redis's point out, uh, pointed out that Ch uh, Charlotte 
career in 1933 uh, had questioned the authenticity of the letters those of alios has been challenged in particular because she made such religious statements how could any medieval woman a let her uh, alone a nun has said such thing the editor of the latin text j t muckle concluded that alios's first two letters had been forged at least reworked because alios's would not have desired to leave such a character sketch of herself to posteriority benton went further that this predecessors as he denied authenticity of the letter alios's historia calamitatum as well as the subsequent letters where Al historia calamitatum has always been assumed to be the genuine autobiography that a crucial document in the study of abelard benton concluded the letter one uh, the large part of 20, uh, 12th century fiction and alios's letter had been composed in the 13th century his purpose in arguing uh, for forgery like that of muckel who was catholic priest who uh, was con um, controvert and conventional picture of abelard and alios is liberal opposed to the authority of the catholic church benton and muckel thought this uh, anarch case it was in misrepresentation of abelard and alios dedicated lives as member of the monastic order alios had been uh, false for false somely praised by peter the venerable abode of cluny which she would not have been according to the anti liberal argument if she had written the shocking letter attributed to her eliminating letter 1 historia calamitatum and other letters of abelard and alios from the literary corpus cuts the protagonist down to size and make them more like another monks and nuns of their time Abelard's academic writing on the logic and theology survive in relatively abundance as does his poetry in religion form of him and liturgical laments. Similarly, Alios documents as a base of the convent of Paraclete. Similarly, Alois is documented as a base of the convent of the Paraclete and as a correspondent of Peter the Venerable. She was also praised as a composer and a poem poet by huge metal this material is conflicted to the intellectual religious sphere as is usual in medieval sources these are the kind of things which clerics thought it appropriate to record there is a little personal information in this we are not told that abelard and alios though thought about themselves still less what they felt by contrast it is expression of the emotion which makes the ally ally um allegedly forged letters of abelard and alio so unusual and so precious abelard being uh, begins historia calamitatum with an appeal to human feelings and alios likewise opens his first letter to him with description of, of her wounded feeling it is because the letters of abelard and alios address the emotion so deliberately they arouse such strong reaction of antagonism or enthusiasm in the reader uh, as theo theory as, as rhetorical works in continuous latin tradition stretching back to cicero this is exactly what they were intend to do by eliminating all eight letters benton aimed to record a more truthful conception of abelard and alios than that of the 19th century liberal stereotypes we could now judge them he argued by stand by standard which they themselves would have considered valid hence forwards they would they could be seen in more positive terms eloisa as a dutiful nun and abelard as a respectable college professor we can strike from the historical record benton wrote the image of abelard as calculating seducer and the arrogant of ungrateful student who could uh, dismiss anselm of leon as sterile and obvious ob obvious skating obfuscating teacher years after the death of that great scholar this was wistful thinking as bent on part however as abelard's contemporaries uh, folk and duel and uh, rosalind described him as seducer and otto of freshing confirmed that mocked anselm of leon much of the controversy about abelard and alios arose from how we choose to characterize them ultimately this runs the not technical point of scholarship but on individual readers reaction to what the source say 
there will never be agreement about them because there was no agreement at time what abelard a uh, golith as saint uh, bernard described him saint bernard described him as goliath the lord of misrule or was the christ philosopher as peter the venerable describes him who alios in uh, who was intellect alios intellectually independent uh, or dependent on abelard the numerous scholars have assumed or did she have mind of her own an epithet of her, her not known to redis declared that she was abelard's equal in feeling conduct and intellect and then adds that she was without equal in her knowledge of literature this implies that she was abelard superior in this respect alios's level of education and knowledge can only be inferred from her letters judging from them it is possible that she did have a better grounding in latin classic uh, than abelard and had specialized in logic as distinct from literature from boyhood in 1980s benton withdraws his allegations that letter one historia calamitatum was mainly a work of fiction admitting that this argument not been vindicated but he did not abandon the theory of forgery as such since he retreated to a fall back positions where abelard because the author of the letter of alios the hypothesis remained consistent uh, with this aim of that abelard and alios in more positive terms and it mean that abies Abelard put words into Alios's mouth in order to exemplify repentance and monastic peace. Since John Benton death in 1988 his position has been maintained by uh Chrysogonus Wedel. Uh, the entire correspondence from which uh, the pen of single writer there is one sole author of the work this author is Abelard. This is in no way excluded and participation of alios since the presentation of theme and exchange of the idea set forth in the letter probably correspond to actual discussion between them this idea of joint letters literacy project between abelard and alios had been first put forward by the latinist peter von moon in 1980 in 88 david uh, luscom in the lecture in british academy brought together the argument as they stood the problem we are left with Uh, many uh, may never dispel is that of the knowing whether the letters were at first written for dispatched separately or successively and each provoking reply and further correspondence with until abelard and alios requested in full whether the collections arose from compact to share compose and ex- exchange their thoughts experience and principles and fictive correspondence in the latter case abelard and alios may be said to have forged the correspondence themselves as luscom at the boundary between fact and fiction between reality and art is not from either the case or can't be certainly drawn the forgery debate which benton has reopened in 1972 is form of historical facts about abelard's life and about the transmission of the manuscripts and spread over in 1980s into the broad uh, post modern question what distinguishes history from literature the literature the letter of abelard and alios have been revalidated uh, in factual terms there are no anachronism in them benton had initially alleged nevertheless they are not necessarily true as any piece of writing is an artif- artifice autobiography in particular has to be literature as much as history abelard and alios were not even writing in their mother tongue but in learned language and a language of demanding rhetorical tradition abelard did not from historia calamitatum a straight forward account of the facts of his life because there was no mood for that in latin literature he knew it purports to be a letter to a friend who is in a fellow man but to this day it is impossible to say whether the friend is literary fiction or a real person who has still to be identified in other words historia calamitatum contains elements of fiction and ambiguity from its opening words addressed to abelard's friend uh, now the debate comes whether these letters are written by a single author or not and this debate is generated uh, i mean we find this introduction uh, of mt clenchy in which he is debating this a single author for all the letters uh, ultimately there is a question mark but let's just discuss the reason why benton and wedel and other argued that so far at least no one has succeeded in isolating stylistic traits and 
uh, incontrovertible distinguish the letters of Abelard those alios furthermore they both made use of the same stock of quotations if there were not single author there must be at least have been uh, an editor who made the letters into the book ready slipped up when she insisted that there seems no reason to suppose that alios edited the personal letters in any way on the contrary someone uh, has edited the letters of alios is the most likely candid candidate if not then we have to presume a third party did not did it and uh, that makes us back into the argument that forgery in arguing that abelard wrote all the letters benton worked on the premise that when abelard and Elios both use the same quotations. The initiative invariables come from the Abelard. <clears throat> this is what the textual evidence suggests. Since some of the quotations in the letters are also found in Abelard's theological work, but Benton did not consider the possibility of many of these ideas and perhaps quotations also. Abelard's theological work derived from Elios and that she could therefore have been initiator of the letters. If in letters of Abelard and Elios the one sole author work, in other words, <coughs> as suggested by Weddell, W A W D E W -L, L, that the author is more likely to have been Alios and Abelard at the convent of the Paraclete. She had the writing facilities, stability, time, and knowledge, and the motive to write. Whereas Abelard was repeatedly on the move and engaged in a series of public con public controversies, which eliminated to his second trial in hearsay and council of since in 1142-1141. For what it is worth, the manuscript edition of the letter also suggested that Alios rather than Abelard was their editor as author. They were associated with the convent of the Paraclete. Now you remember the name of the convent of the Paraclete and the video which I am uploading, you will find the pictures of convent of Paraclete as well. And with the Paris or Cluny. Abelard saw him in the last decades of his life, but the manuscript edition in itself shaky and all controversies about the authorities of the letters originated from this. There are no letters of Abelard and Alios in the sense of actual document written or sealed by them. There is no incontrovertible auto autograph writing of either of them at all. Their letters existed only as a copies made up in book form and earliest book of this sort date is from 1280 remember this is what the time 1280 more than 150 years after events they concern redis points out these facts in themselves do not prove nor even suggest that the correspondence is a forgery or medieval letters were not usually kept any more than modern uh, ones are the only sorts of the letters routinely preserved for a posteriority in the 12th century were the charters documenting the property of monastic houses in addition to that exceptionally successful monks like saint bernard and peter the venerable had copied of the letters preserved in book form and spiritual readings for their successors it is such monastic con uh, context that the letters of the abelard and alios are made presumed to have been made up to the book and the convent of the paraclete because they formed part of the for foundation history of the convent but his first 12th century copy of the letters has not been preserved or never actually existed if we accept the forgery argument all we have now are the copies of the beginning around 1280 which are associated by jean de Mion, who is credited with translating the letters into french and publishing them in paris therefore thenceforward the letters entered the literary canon and they were enjoyed by petrarch and other intellectuals in the 14th and 15th century as jean de Mun was undoubtedly the publicizer of the letters and there is no evidence of their existence before this time his time no writers refer to them before 1280 hubert sylvester gave renewed life to the forgery controversy in 1985 by arguing that Jean himself was their author. The hip hypothesis that the merit of the naming or the writer might have been capable of such a imaginative feat where Benton had never been convincing a specific about the motive of his unnamed uh, forgers. On other hand, Sylvester insisted that Historia Calamitatum contained anar chronism, anachronism and mistakes and this is not the case. The argument for the gene authorship is weakened since it is hard to see how uh, he could have been accurate about the many details of Abelard's life so long 
after his death the failure of the bentons attempt to show that letter historia calamitatum is a forgery had reinforced the authenticity of the letter collection as a whole since all the manuscripts start with its make and others letter depends on them it silvest silvester wanted jean de mion to be the author of the letter so that he could demonstrate that alios has been a good catholic and who has never written words of abelard about being a harlot of an unbeliever just as benton wanted abelard to be responsible college professor silvester wanted alios to be an ob- obedient old fashioned nun like his fellow catholic priest uh, jt muckel uh, silvester Sylvester cites Peter the venerable letter of the Alios and uh, in irrefutable evidence that Peter would have never been uh, Sylvester's view they are incompatible with morality in Christian doctrine whether Alios was in fact a proud pagan who derived her moral views from Cines and Roman stoic rather than the Christ and his saint is question which will continue to debate as long as the letters as are read there will always be difference of opinion about the whether the medieval ages were without exception or age of fake it is impossible to be certain that peter the venerable knew about alios's and in her most thought he probably knew more than the latter suggests as a boat of cluny controlled hundreds of monasteries across latin christendom he had a large intelli- intelligence gathering network in europe silvestris presumed that there is irrefutable evidence that he would have condemned alios if it has but immortal and no factual so there is a lot of debate which is generated by uh, mt clenchy and the debate is going on how whether the letters are written by one writer or the uh, or many the identity of alois in 1990s the spotlight shifted from abelard to alois this was signaled by barbara newman's article 1992 entitled authority authenticity and the repression of alois which argued that she did indeed compose the letters to abelard and furthermore <coughs> she came to abelard with not only her mind but her imagination already well stocked This refers to Abelard's description in letter 1 Historia Calamitatum of how even before he knew her her literary knowledge has already made her most renowned throughout the realm of France page 10 a rare but revealed landscape radis miss the force of the latin superlative a most renowned is her translation made the weaker statement that Aloysia's knowledge had won her renown uh, renown This uh, minor mistake reinforces Newman's argument that the reputation of Aloysius has uh, tended to get slighter by scholar whether male or female because the medieval women intellectual is so unfamiliar a phenomena Peter the venerable like was commented on Aloysius extraordinary fame and added that she could not be distress distracted from her usual plan to learn the art for that literary achievements had aloysi aloysia won such a preoccupied uh, knowledge peter the venerable drew attention to her m- musical composition ears skill sent new term of melody to very ears of the god a huge medal uh, in his letter to the likewise began with her music sing praise to the lord or harp and a symbol your fame flying sounding through the voice has uh, resounded with us in medieval astronomical theory and through the space via the harmonies made by the crystal sphere which hold the stars in place by this means huge explain aloysius fame had reached him his fellow canons for far away uh, on in border of the france and germany you have surpassed the female sex how by composing prose by the verifying a uh, new constructions and by renewing family words these descriptions le- uh, refer to later period in eloisa's life of none of them is conclusive proof of her real fame and authors of an x or grin historia calamitatum abelard's wanted to show that eloisa was a good enough match for him the greatest philosopher in the world would team up with the most brilliant woman in france peter the venerable may have praised her so uh, flawlessly because he wanted to draw her and her nuns into the uh, clunaic sphere of the influence as against saint bernard christian in uh, fact aloysia adopted christian's liturgical practice at the convent of the paraclete 
and for huge metal it was that ally of the saint bernard's persistent self publicist who has attacked abelard as a heroic on the basis of the little evidence nevertheless these testimonies despite their bias do suggest that aloisa was famed for her mastery of latin and her originality in composing prose verse and music the epithet of her stating that she was unequal to in the knowledge of all literature she was so renowned among intellectuals at least composing of hers in both oral and written form must have circulated widely in france and beyond france as well as according to huge metal of her earliest work which established her reputation before abelard knew her no information now super wife what sort of things might have publicized her outstanding knowledge of the classical literature two additional letters by aloisa has survived they emanated from the manuscripts independent of the art and convent of the paraclete one is to peter the venerable that is page number 224 and the other to ablard the letter lack its uh, salutation and validation and it was not translated by radis though she not its description of the ablard love by many but most clearly loved by us the letter introduces what aloisa calls the baby questions about passage in the bible of the abelard to answer which he duly does often to length much of his work looks simplistic and in my have been ignored uh, had it not been uh, by elios and abelard for example anid macleon in her biography and aloisa pick out questions question number what does it mean when st paul says pray without ceasing to which abelard replies never neglect a mo- moment when we should pray in fact aloisa was alluding her to profound a uh, problem when the literal interpretation of the scripture st paul's word can cannot be taken literally as there would be no time for sleep and essential need this is why abelard explains st paul only mean those time when we should be praying in commenting on these questions of aloisa macleod says they offer notable evidence both of how attentively she was accustomed to read and of the profound critical attitude largely the result no doubt abelard influence macleod no doubt is revealing there is no evidence that the aloisa derives her critical attitude from abelard on the contrary it is more likely that she was to her mind and her mind already well stocked macleod underestimate the aloisa's ability to com- comparable with the uh, like was from 1930s that ideas about the loved derived probably through abelard it is not surprising that debate have continued over the centuries about the letters of abelard and aloisa not that new idea can emerge more than 800 years after the death he has always been a controversial figure and she is rapidly becoming one perhaps he was saint bernard his a man dismissed dissimilar even from himself so we cannot say that anything is characteristic or uncharacteristic of him he gave his great collection of citation from the church father an enigmatic title yes and no it prologue begin amid such great mass of the words some of the statements even of the saints not seem to differ from each other but actually contradict one another the bibliography of the abelard and alios has become comparably massive and bewildering particularly because of the range of the speculations about the identification and authenticity of the letters and ultimately these are questions that experts can cannot answer or to see this decisive proof in the form of uh, individual letters